This one's relative to a story we did earlier called Car Capers, where we were shooting a gas tank with a rifle and trying to make it explode, and that did not happen. However, we got grief from viewers saying, well, you should have used a tracer around that it set off the gas tank. That's not the myth that we were busting. The myth in Hollywood is that every bullet plus any given gas tank equals an explosion or a fire. Adam's Hollywood effects equation was spot on. But when the Mythbusters tried to solve it, shooting rounds into a gas tank just turned it into Swiss cheese. There were no sparks, no ignition, and certainly no explosion. If there's anything we could be faulted for, it's not doing the classic Mythbusters two-prong attack on a myth. We did not test the results. What kind of round will you get an explosion or a fire with? And, and that is a tracer round. But aren't tracer rounds illegal? Indeed they are, mon frere. Uh, unless, that is, you have friends in the FBI. At Alameda County Bomb Range, their FBI friend Frank is on hand to help. Frank, are these our uh, special bullets that you procured for us? Yes, these are .223 caliber tracer rounds. Well, what is it that makes them work? The orange tip of the bullet contains phosphorus. When the round is fired, the friction with the air makes the phosphorus burn, which is why they glow and why they could ignite a gas tank. So it's a good job the fire crew is here then. Of all the permutations, what's the worst possible case scenario for you guys? I think the worst possible scenario at this point, due to the moderate winds and dry conditions we have, uh, a fire um, starting, igniting, going over the hillside. So wayward bullets could spell disaster. All right then. Sharpshooter Jamie is clipped in. Okay, I'm loading. And he's going to start by firing a single tracer into the half-filled gas tank. Three, two, one. Think you hit it? I don't know. Adam goes in to take a closer look at the damage. Well, he hit it. That's for sure. Right down there, about 7 o'clock here. I smell gas fumes, but uh, obviously nothing caught on fire. Well, I guess what we gotta do is plug these up and go for several rounds now. It was a direct hit, but no explosion. Grant seals the wound as Jamie gets ready to unleash this time a whole clip of bullets into the tank. Iron hole! Iron hole! Three, two, one. Jamie begins unloading rapid fire. Direct hit after direct hit, but no explosion. But then, trouble. Did you see that tracer shot up into the field? Yeah, I did. Hold on a second, it's smoking the grass. And I can see gasoline pouring out the front of the tank. A tracer popped up into the field. The range is shut down. Fire plus leaking gas, not ideal. So the fire crew get in to investigate. They said the worst case scenario is grass gets on fire, grass through fence that can't be gotten through, wind heading that way where vehicles can't go. Hmm. Yeah. Worst case scenario and it happened. <laughs> How does it seem? Seems all right? I don't see any smoke. All right, cool. They're off the hook, but the myth ain't so hot. I've had my fun working off a full clip of incendiary rounds and tracer <laughs> rounds here. I say, you know, you guys pick your weapons. Ammo all around. Those will be for you. Both of them? Sure. <laughs> Sweet. To silence the critics, they're going for broke. If this doesn't cause an explosion, nothing will. Okay, is everybody loaded? Loaded. Okay, safety's off. Fire at will. It's like General Custer's last stand, but with tracer rounds. And the tank? Nothing. Nada. Zip. This myth is surely busted again. 75 gunshots later, and the tank's got more holes than a donut shop. 
But Jamie wants to try once more with the tank further away. The reason being that these tracer rounds ignite from air friction and understandably, you know, they're probably not going to ignite right as they come out of the barrel. It may take a little distance. So they reposition the gun point another 50 feet back and top up the tank. With Grant safely out of the way. And three, two, one. As the rounds fly, it's the same old story until... At last, we have fire. The high speed shows the moment of ignition. And who knows, if the tank was not like Swiss cheese, there may have even been an explosion. The tracer round will, in fact, ignite gasoline in a tank. And if you had an enclosed tank, pressure plus fire plus the correct air-fuel mixture equals explosion. So I'd say we call this one confirmed. And everyone can go home and rest easy. Why didn't we get an RPG? <laughs> it would have been a lot faster. That's the next revisit. Someone's going to write in and say, you guys should have used an RPG because that would definitely have blown up the car. And then we'll go get one of those and then we'll blow up the car and then there'll be some other problem. And we're fine with that. I don't know how to actually call this one. We busted it the first time. We confirmed it the second time without somehow reversing our previous results. Tracer rounds will blow up a gas tank. The Wildcat, on the other hand, is built like a tank. Okay, Steve, so now we're at the Wildcat, and man, I just pounded on this, and this is a this is a stubby, rugged little airframe. Exactly, the Wildcat, and that's why I call it Grumman Ironworks. I mean, they're overbuilt. There's a time of uh, development, you know, that they didn't uh, split the decimal point. I mean, if there was a question, they made it stronger than it needed to be, and uh, this is a good example of it. I mean, this thing could really take a beating, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, you know, the way that the design of the structure and the simplicity of the construction. I mean, if you look at it, there's not a lot of curved parts on this thing, so uh, they could just crank them out. Well, being rugged obviously lends itself to being more durable in combat for, for defensive purposes. Talk to me a little bit about kind of the defensive features that Grumman put into this. Well, uh, they, they had a lot of armor plate. They had a big armor plate uh, behind the pilot. This slab of steel weighs 94 pounds. And in front of the pilot, there's a 25-pound bullet-resistant windscreen. The fuel cell is made of a rubber, real thick uh, self-sealing fuel tank is what they called it. You know, if it took a bullet, a bullet passed right through it, and chemicals would react with the fuel and seal up the holes. Features like these would sure make me feel a lot safer if I was driving a Wildcat into battle. Believe it or not, these are gasoline tanks for airplanes. They're not like any gas tanks you ever saw, you say? Well, those funny shapes and sizes are made to conform to the type of plane they have to fit into, in and around struts and braces and along the wings, using every inch of space allowed them. For instance, this one is mounted along with several others in a consolidated bomber. But their shape is not the only peculiar thing about them. On the ground, the Army inspector fills the tank with gas, and then... I'll warrant you never saw a gas tank treated like this before. No, he didn't miss. The bullet went straight through it. Let's put the camera up close while we stand back and try it again. All right, let her go. The bullets tear their way through all right, but the holes seal right up. Magic, you say? The kind that brings in a shot-up plane, like this one just back from Germany, with more than 500 bullet holes in her. But she brought home her crew, while nine of the enemy went down in flames. 